Hello dear ones, it's Alice. I am of the stars and I'm out here at the junction of a dirt road, 500, Route 500, which goes from Navajo Lake up, up the way, down this way to uh, Pagosa Hot Springs. And then there's another road here that goes off down this way and, and goes all the way to Dulce, New Mexico. And, but, however, I started down that road and it, it went into um, Native American lands and then uh, it went down low by the river and, uh, and my, my little car wouldn't make it down that way. But so while I was down that way, I, I came across uh, some early um, settlements down that way that are now ghost towns. And uh, right now I'm over here at the Juanita Cemetery. And I stopped by here and checked out all of the names on the um, crosses and like that because of something that happened on the way down towards Dulce, which I'll tell you about right now. So, I was going down along the river, that side of the river, because the rivers come together at the junction there. And um, I came across a couple of houses. I have pictures of them. And I was just wondering about, you know, the history of the houses as I left. And I started to hear uh, the voice of two people talking. And uh, I will say that this does happen to me once in a while. Uh, uh, but not very frequently that I hear what y'all call ghosts. I call them, well, some people call them earthbound spirits. They might be very attached to being where they are or not quite ready to pass when they pass. And, so, um, or they, in this case, they were taken by surprise, and so they just weren't quite prepared for leaving. And so, so people call them earthbound, but really they're just hanging around their favorite places, uh, trying to come to some conclusions before they move on in the astral plane to all of the soul learning that's available to them there. And uh, sometimes I think that if, 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 if there's a sudden incident or an upset on passing that there's like a um, body elemental upset body, body body elemental memory that stays and and has can talk and all that and but doesn't really know that it's passed on and and um, and is waiting to resolve some soul upset you know and so um, and so that's what I call a fractal. It's a memory. It's a kind of a part or energy of the of the soul that the great soul that went on. But it's not really the soul. It's just um, a trauma trauma energy that remains for some reason and and continues to like replay an upset scene. So all that and you'll recall a, a year or so ago I went to a Mormon cemetery that's now on, I think, Native American lands. And uh, there I, I ran into, first while I was walking, I ran into, um, what would you say? Um, I, I'm not sure the right name of it, but there were, um, it was like a happy hunting ground, an afterworld. Uh, a group of Native Americans who had passed on, uh, passed by overhead and were talking to me about the situation. There was among them someone pretty wise. And so then after that, I went to the, the um, Mormon cemetery there. There had been a catastrophe at that settlement and a flood and famine and uh, a lot of little children had died. And there was a young child, about eight years old, I think, who passed on too uh, and was upset about a number of things. His name was Gad. And, and I asked him and he said his parents called him Gad because he, he asked so many questions, they reminded him of a gadfly. <laughs> I mean, he reminded them of a gadfly. So we chatted for a while. He wasn't really ready to leave yet, you know. Sometimes uh, fractals or ghosts are ready to, to go to the light, to see the guardian angels and go to the light. And sometimes they're, they're not. And I figure we just have to leave it in God's hands if we do our best to help them. On, and they're not ready yet, then we leave God in charge of that situation. And that's what happened to me again today. So, I'll tell you the story.
I was leaving and first I heard uh, from this this log cabin that was starting to fall down and first I heard the voice of a, of a country country man and he called himself Jasper Jasper Duncans and uh, pretty soon his wife chimed in her name he he he, he was not real clear I, I think her name was Irene and he liked to call her Iris yeah and she said that her name was Kirkwell, her last name was Kirkwell before she was married, and that the family changed it from Kirkwood to Kirkwell, okay? So, so I asked him what the story was. I asked him if they, if they knew that they had passed on. And, and the gentleman, Jasper, he said, well, no. And I said, well, when was the last time you had anything to eat? Because that's usually the next question. And Irene, she said, um, I remember having some tea, right? And so I said, oh, I said, and oh, what happened with that, right? And she said, oh, well, I said, oh, what kind of tea was that? And she said, sagebrush tea. And I said, and then Jasper chimed in. He says, There's, there must have been something in that tea, you know? And then I got that they both passed on right around the time they drank that sagebrush tea. Uh, so... I did try, try to help them to turn to the light and turn to their guardian angels, which you have to turn away from the scene of, the, of your log cabin that you so much love and the river that they really loved. You have to turn away from that and turn to the other plane where, where your new soul learning awaits you, where the bright light shines, you know. But, and so I, Irene seemed to take very much to the angel realm, but Jasper wasn't ready to leave. So um, she, she came back to be with him. And so I had some chatting with them. I heard that from her that they were actually heading to, to California, but they, they stopped where they were. And I asked them about the, whether they had any children. And Jasper answered. He said, he's pretty upset. He said, well, he said, four passed, but four made it. Four passed on, but four made it. And... Uh, she said that's because there were, we couldn't get any, you know, we couldn't take them to the doctor. And something about whoop and cough. And so, uh, um, it kept coming up a couple of times that, that, their, that their bodies were never found. And so I think this is the problem here is that they didn't maybe get a decent burial. So I stopped by, that's why I stopped by this graveyard to see if maybe there was a monument or stone or marker for them, and I didn't see anything. So um, what, I, what I would ask is for those of you that are willing, just say a little, little prayer for all of the, the souls who are deceased, who've, who've left their bodies, all our friends and family and all the people that that went before us in, in places that may not be marked by tombstones, that maybe some, nobody ever found their, their body, and they didn't get the kind of burial that, that we would hope that they would get to help them, them release their own sadness and, and go on. So let's just say a little prayer once, once a day, once a week, or even once a month for the, the dear departed souls, that they should find they should find rest, that they should find peace, and that they should find God. And so we can pray for, therefore, for, um, especially right now for Jasper and Irene's um, souls, that they may find peace and, and uh, maybe a monument for them might be placed. Maybe I could come up with something. And that, um, or like some marker, you know. And that there are four children that passed on, that they should they should find peace too. And those children that may still be alive or their children's children should, should hear this and know this, that, that those two whose, who, whose bodies were never fi found passed on at the time when they had some sagebrush tea that was all balled up and apparently something a little wrong with it. So, so uh, um, God bless them. God bless all that, that ever knew them. And God bless you, too, for your prayers and for your good intentions. Take care. Love you all. Bye-bye.